Hello, everyone. Yeah, welcome to this session, and good morning. Uh, today, my talk is about uh, aiding the ARM CC support in the confidential containers. So, uh, brief, in brief self-introduction, I'm Kevin Zhao from uh, Leonardo. I'm the tech lead of the Leonardo Data Center Group. So today, I, my uh, talk is uh, mainly about yeah, five part. So first one, I want to introduce the brief concept of what we have now and uh, what is our plan to support the confidential computing uh, on ARM CC with COCO, the confidential containers. And after that, I will introduce uh, so how to do this uh, integration support on Kata. Because so COCO, the confidential container, is based on Kata container runtime. So we need to support this. Um, then, so I will introduce uh, CC token create. So this one we are writing for the uh, CC, CC a, uh, token verification to do the local ver verification. And then I will introduce uh, plans, what we have with COCO attestation service and the Verizon to do the remote attestation. And the last part is uh, th there is a small demo. So, but it, this is not a live demo. I have recorded it previously, yeah, because all our realization is based on software currently. We don't have hardware, so that will need a small, long time to do this demo, yeah. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, uh, does anyone here say it before? Put up your hand. So, okay. I can briefly go ahead this part because so this is a general concept. So ARM has introduced the uh, ARM CSA uh, confidential computing architecture in 2021, in the middle of 2021. So, and uh, previously ARM has Trust Zone, has uh, SEL2 to support uh, launching the TEEs. Uh, but we know that so TEEs is more popular in the edge side or in the client side because we need to, yeah, we need to have our SDK to doing the code, to, to doing the application code, so that it has introduced a lot of the efforts in the application, so that just as Intel TDX or AMD SEV, so ARM has launched the uh, confidential computing architecture. The hardware is based on the Realm, the Realm management extension called IME, and uh, ARM CCA is a reference software solution based on the hardware. And on top of that, we have the trusted firmware support, the IMM support, and also uh, the hyperwriter support. So yeah, so this is the CCA software stack. Uh, we we can see so previously they are uh, just the normal word, the the the, the yellow one, uh, sorry, the blue one, and the the secure state that is a. Uh, uh, Previously, the trust zone, the, the secure state. So, uh, besides this, ARM has introduced the, the realm state. Yeah. So, by introducing this realm state, ARM has also defined several components. So, especially is a realm management monitor. So, we can see that is a yellow one on the e, uh, sorry that that is a green one on the EL2 called IMM, and also define some interface together with a. Uh, uh, together with the room, room guest and the hypervisor. So the first one is the IMI. So that one is, uh, is the interface between the hypervisor in the normal world and the IMM in the realm world. So uh, this one will take charge of the create and destroy the realm from the normal world. Besides, so, so they can do in the context switch between the realm VCPUs and also uh, the, the uh, realm management memory management, so especially for the state two translation tables has been offloaded to the IMM. The other one is the ISI. So this one is the interface between the guest kernel, I mean the realm guest kernel and the IMM. So the main, main job for this one is doing the measurement and the attestation. Yeah. And uh, also, so in the EL3, we can see that that is a root state the trusted firmware monitor need to support the IME extension. And also there's a, a grand protection table that is a, a, a global table to, to, to indicate that which is the, the memory can be accessed by realm or not, by, or by normal world. So 
uh, they, they, this one has been has been maintained by the trusted firmware at the root state. And uh, the last one, the runtime security subsystem, this is usually our Cortex M core to serve as the root root of trust, usually in the ARM servers. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. Then another question. So does anyone hear about Coco before? I think. Good, yeah, I can quickly skip this one because anyone is familiar with this one. So we want to uh, make the configuration container to support Coco and uh, together with other uh, TEs, such as uh, TDX, MDSV, and uh, uh, one big use case for Coco is to remove the trust, uh, remove the cloud service provider from the trusted compute base. Yeah, okay. And then, so what our works, so the, the, the relationship between CCA and COCO, what our work should be done to support, yeah. We can see, so we can just escape the secure state because currently our work are not related with this part, but maybe in the future, uh, there will be some new support to, 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 yeah. So just so we can see, so in the normal world, the Kubernetes and Hyperweather are running in the normal world. And it needed kind of support to launch the realm in usually with QMU backend or the cloud hypervisor backend. Besides, so IMM has offloaded some previously function uh, from the hypervisor to the IMM, especially for the state two tables. And uh, from the guest side, we, we need to support, the guest kernel need to support ISI interface to do the remote attestation. Besides, yeah, so the guest firmware I mean, usually the open source solution is EDK2, so it needs to launch the gas kernel and also be aware of the ISI interface and also doing the remote attestation. And yeah, remote attestation. So currently that one is a background check model. So this slides I grew up from the Coco community. That is, a, we can see, so in the, mid, in the central part, the, the big, Gray box, the, re the relying party has some components. The first one is a test station service. So it has a Wi-Fi driver. It, it, the, this driver, yeah, so for different uh, CPU vendors, it need to realize their CPU, uh, re re realize their Wi-Fi drivers. So for ARM, it also, we, we also need to do this. And in the right part, the Kubernetes port part, we can see the CDH is a proxy running in, in, in the Geist to offer the service related with, or to offer the service related API. So it is a proxy for the attestation agent. So for the attestation agent, it also has a test drivers that are running in the realm. So this one will, uh, when, when the container boot, it will ask for the guest kernel and firmware to, and then call the ISI to do, to, to, uh, uh, to abstract the measurement and the, CSA tokens, I mean, the, the evidence, and then send the evidence uh, from the CDH to KBrook service and then get to the attestation service. And uh, in the attestation service part, there are also two realization methods for the remote attestation for ARM CCA. So I listed here, first one is local verification. We have written a, a, a Rust crate to do, and the other one is we can offload those, this work to Verizon, that is another third-party service that offered by, by ARM for a reference about the remote attestation. Okay, and we, I have just listed several steps to introduce CCA with Coco, just as a consequence. So first one is a base support. This one is almost finished, but much of the patch has still been revealed on the upstream, yeah. So the kernel EDK2, rootFS, and trusted firmware support. Uh, the other one is a uh, hyperweather support. Uh, currently, the cumulus support one has been already done, and we can just try with the, to launch a cumulus. Uh, and uh, then is a cutter support that I, that I will also introduce in a, in the following part. The other one is uh, from Coco side. So we know so Coco is based on cutter, and uh, adding some other components, especially for the remote attestation. So the remote attestation service, both from the server side and the 
agent side, both need to support MCCA. And also, there are some framework adoption. That means that the Kubernetes should be aware of the computer computing, so we need to support the multi-arc operators for, for CC. And also, uh, there are some code changes for the container image service to, uh, to yeah, for example, the service of loading. Yeah, the host must, uh, must not decrypt or mount container image. Uh, for example, so the, w when the guest boot, when the, I mean the, the sandbox boot, it need to just uh, uh, doing the remote attest uh, attestation and then, and, and then put the image, do the decryption and verify. Yeah. Okay. The next part is a Carter CCA integration. Yeah, so this is a picture for Carter containers and the relationship between Carter containers and the confidential container. So in the middle of the red box, that is a sandbox container, which is we can treat as a VM, the confidential VM. Uh, and uh, so the, the yellow one, Oh, sorry, not, not, not yet. We can see the, the, the green one. So the kernel EDK2, the EDK2 kernel initial reference. So those ones are from the Kata container project. And the Kata agent should have some uh, code change to support the totally, totally boot chains because uh, when we're booting, we need to do the remote attestation. And also after that, we need a image, image check and decryption. So, so that one is quite different between what Kata do before. And uh, also the confidential, the, the yellow box, yeah, you can see the attestation agent and the confidential data hub. So both of them need to be pre-built into the Kata sandbox image first. Uh, and after the, after the, when the booting process is need to do the re remote att attestation with the relying party here, that one has, go ahead. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you complete, so, you complete attestation, then you load the image. Yes, so after that attestation, the image should be decrypted. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. But this uh, process uh, has some different re re realizations and uh, has some deep discussion in core community to speed up this process. Yeah, because the problem is if we, after that, if we just uh, after the attestation and the pull the image, that will in induce a problem is uh, the loading is very long. It takes, it takes a very long time. So uh, there are some different workaround to support this, to uh, speed up this process. Yeah. But uh, what, we are, what we want to achieve is to make sure that the image will be only decrypt after we got the key to doing the remote att attestation. You have source confidentiality as well in the state Yes, yes. Okay, so, and uh, what we have work on Kata is almost in the Kata chain to support, uh, to support launching the QML realm, we, we, to support launching the realm via QML. Yeah, there are some predictions what, what I'm working on. So first is uh, QML support. The other one is the guest EDK2. And also uh, both the host and the guest kernel need to uh, need the special branch. And also the kernel config is quite different because uh, the by default uh, kernel need to be suitable with the Kata essential features. Yeah, so that is a, a fragile work, but need to be done, yeah. And also, uh, since that Kata has already supported the confidential guest before, uh, I mean, so what our work is on top of the framework to, to, also, to also support a Kata CC backend. Uh, there's a file system shell, uh, this, I mean the storage shell between the guest and the host, that is the vertical FS and the vertical NumP. So both of them are all supported. We have implementation several features here. So first one is about the, the check, the host capability check. So currently there is a no user-friendly flags, I mean flags for, for the host to know that, uh, for the user to know that uh, the host can launch with, uh, with ROM. But yeah, for Intel, 
GDX or AMD SEV, SEV you, can all, you can very easy to find some flags to know that uh, this host can run ROM. But currently, what ARM just done is to doing the KVM check extensions. But I believe this one will be uh, implemented in the future. This is the first one. The other one is uh, uh, we should be support the QMU uh, parameters with, with a specific launch in the room, and also add a runtime class with Kata QMU CCA. The last part is uh, support the kernel configuration to make sure that the Kata sandbox uh, VMs uh, conclude all the essential features for not only the ROM launching, but also the Kata's Kata features. Yeah, so, and uh, there are some limitations currently what we are not implemented, but uh, on the plan. So the first one is oh, what we are doing just on Kata V2, but we will extend this to Kata V3. So the difference between V2 and V3 is that uh, V2 is written by Golang, and V3 is a Rust-based uh, uh, code, yeah. The other, the other thing is we just support QMU backend to launch the QMU room, uh, but uh, I know uh, some guys are already working on to this cloud hypervisor support for the CCA. The other thing is we just support the disk kernel boot with Kata, and uh, ADK21 has been validated but not uh, finished. Uh, and the last thing is SAPI support. This one is also not supported currently in QMU to launch the realm, but uh, it will be finished uh, finally, yeah. The plan, next. The first one is cloud hypervisor support. The other one is uh, the lightweight, uh, fair, uh, is the, the, the lightweight firmware support, just like the Intel TDCM. It because so EDK2 is a little thick for launching a realm. The third one is we plan to offer a cumulative based CI to cut a community to make sure that uh, all the change in the future will be tested on ARM platform. And uh, also we, we are planning to have some end-to-end -end demo based on the totally software solutions to, yeah, to, to, to show that the ARM CC is value. Okay, next part regarding with remote attestation. So, that is the source CCA token create. Uh, this is a, uh, the link. So, we have already published with a 0.1 version. So, th this one is to, uh, we can cheat as a CCA token primitive. Uh, that is something like an Intel DCAP library to doing the remote attestation token verification and appraisal locally for ARM CCA. And uh, we also yeah, pr provide a command line tools and API to test this one. So all the, uh, the, all the con concept has been defined in the IMM spec. Yeah, we can skip this one. Yeah, and API. So. This library will provide API to deal with the Sybil decoding because so Sybil, uh, Sybil, uh, Sybil is defined in the IMM, yeah. That, that one is used for the remote attestation uh, data transaction. So this, this API is also offer the crypto graphics verification of the platform and the realm part as well as the, their bounding check. So, and also doing the appraisal uh, according to the reference value service. Oh, sorry. So, and uh, we have defined the result of the uh, crypto graphics verification and uh, appraisal. So that one is defined as the uh, R4SI uh, trusted worth vectors. Yeah. In the following, there are some very uh, simple demo for, well, very simple command lines to just uh, realize this yeah, we can see, so we, we, we can first get the reference value store. So this one is doing the appraisal. And uh, this is get from the memory reference store. So you can also just, uh, this is feasible. This API is feasible. You can, we can get from maybe another trusted center from the remote offered by different CPU vendors or another cloud service provider vendors to do this. Yeah, anyway, so 
uh, we will, yeah, firstly load this reference value service and read from the token, CSA token stable. Maybe we can get from the attestation agent from Coco or other places. And also doing the decode, doing the decoder and also doing the reason. Yeah. Then the, we, we, you will get uh, trusted vectors and the, to read the, re, to read the re result. So the verification is the same. Yeah, it's a defined API to doing the verifications. So the, the verification is generally we can get from the trust voucher stores using the platform's CPAC token to doing the cryptographic check. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, three APIs we offered in the client side. You can just use this to try to doing something. So first one is a uh, appraisal. So match a CCA token against the, the reference values. The other one is verify. So doing the cryptographic verifier with a CCA token using a set of trusted vouchers, maybe yeah, from, from, from the remote side, just as the Intel DCAP to read the, the trust voucher from the Intel PCS, PCS and PCCS. And the last one is golden. We use this one to, to, to abstract the reference values and the trust voucher from a uh, for CSA token and the published CPAC. So, and uh, this is, uh, we define two state. The first one is, uh, the green one is a uh, reference state. We use a golden API to, to get this reference value state and store locally, or, yeah, and store locally. In the yellow one, that is the actual state. So just uh, the concept is to verify first and uh, appraisal, then we get a consequence. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. Yes. So uh, if you know, my actual token, here's some reference values that I want my actual token to match. Yeah, yeah. That's not, that's not really yes, yeah. So previously, that one is usually we get from maybe our, uh, uh, trusted vouchers from maybe cloud service provider or CPU vendor they offered. Yes. So but from this, this part, we offer this client to easily get from them. Okay, continue, okay. Uh, yeah, so the last part here is about client example. So we can just uh, either skip this, so doing the appraisal for, yeah, and uh, also doing the verify, yeah. And this is the last part. I can see, uh, we can see that uh, maybe we, I, I can all uh, answer these questions uh, more easily because so this one will will show that how we do with Coco's remote attestation. Yeah, there are two options to do this. The first one is using Verizon service. So Verizon is uh, short of uh, the uh, ver verification of remote attestation. So this is an open source project offered by ARM and also hosted by CCC. Uh, we can offload all the token verifications and appraisal to the remote service. This Verizon service can running remotely and have nothing to do with the local local cocoa environment. So this uh, this idea is just the same as Intel offers. For example, the Intel Amber. This one has been changed to the trusted service, maybe. So all the appraisal and uh, verification has been completed. This one will be offloaded to another service. But the problem is there are some coordination work needed for provisioning this reference value first, uh, provisioning these reference values and the verification keys in the, in the remote attestation service part from, I mean, here is very, very reason. Yeah, so, and also there should be maybe a bottleneck for the rest, for the remote Re, uh, attestation service exercise, yeah, because so uh, the service is auto control maybe. The other one is uh, doing the local uh, attestation. So doing, we can use the CCA tokens to doing everything locally. Go ahead.
Yeah. Make sure that that's a place you can trust. Yes. So yeah, yeah. So right. you run that in the CE yourself? Yeah, here the local is maybe in the, in the cloud service provider's local environment, but okay. in, in another part. Okay. Yes, but not in the same machine. So, yeah, but we, we should trust that uh, the, the um, attestation service is running local in our TCB. We can trust it. So the, the advantage is there is no other dependencies, but we still need to uh, use uh, API to get from the trust vouchers remotely. Yeah. So yeah, we can see the first integration. So uh, a test state service using pure label reason. In the left part is AS is short for attestation service. This is a component from Coco. And it has a CCA verifier. Then use the API client to talk with the uh, yeah to, to talk with the Verizon service. In the right part, we can see uh, there is a client to yeah to pr provision the trust vouchers and reference values in their part in Verizon service part. So basically, the local one has nothing to do with the remote one. That is a provisioning, so just prepare the trust voucher and reference value first. And doing a brazel. I mean, so when it has the evidence input, and then here, all the components, we can treat it as a proxy. So has doing nothing currently, just have our evidence to the remote testing service and get the back and get back the attestation result. So here in the attestation service, they just doing the uh, policy chain or policy check by maybe open policy agent or something else. So Verizon service also has a, I mean the policy, but uh, we can disable this to over to disable the to make sure that there are no overlap. Oh, that. And uh, we, we can see the provisioning. Yeah, provisioning here is just a concept. We made changes because we want to use the Coco's reference value provider service as a local uh, running, yeah, running locally to serve as a, to, to, to serve as a, the, the trust voucher store and reference value stores. So it will get from the trust voucher and the reference values from the hardware vendors or CSPs. So all the things we can just use in the CCA token to directly talk with the reference value service providers then doing the local verification. So this, uh, this is also under discussions, uh, but we have also made, made some agreements in the Cocoa community. Okay. And uh, yeah, we can come to a demo. Time one. Okay. That is a long time demo, so I can speed up. So first one, we need to provision in the host. Yeah. Provision the host is very easy. We can use a script. So this one is provisioned by the QMU, QMU TCG, which has supported the QMU host. And it will start with several interface, with, with, uh, sorry, with, with several terminals. Yeah, we can see the, the command line has support the CCA ROM capabilities. The host booting is very quickly, yeah. That is a boot with a Linux kernel 6.7 with the CC realm support. Yeah, boot it. So, no, oh, that's speed up. And the next plan is to boot the realm. And the uh, Boot room, we are, uh, I plan to use Kata container to boot. So this process may, may need a, a relatively long time.
we can see the configurations has set up already for the confidential guest. So it has that to true. The command to boot Kata is very easy. We can start the container D to, yeah, and also, yeah, we can start container D service and it will call the Kata shame V2 to launch the, to launch the realm. Yeah, container D start. And use the CR, CTR API to launch. Yeah, just very easy to to launch this. Oh. Hello too. Ah, hello again. Okay. Yeah. Then we are waiting. We need to wait about several minutes. Yeah. Not in, not in TCB. Oh. It is in the host. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can see the, here is a, the firmware's output. It has output very slowly for the realm, uh, for, for the realm tags. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, so we can also see the guest, uh, there are the command lines I, I show here. So. Uh, to uh, to support the realm guest, and this command line has already been changed uh, because of the rapid development cycle, and we are continue work uh, waiting, 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 waiting. Yeah, we should be there. Yeah, we can see the that should be there. Okay, yeah, we are there. Yeah. So after that, we can boot into the color containers. I believe, yeah, so the demo is finished. Because we just uh, put a busy box with a very limited command line, so, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is a demo. And uh, let me see. Okay, that is totally for my session today. So, any questions? Yeah, please. Do you need a microphone? Mac? Yeah. So uh, a couple of things. Firstly, um, the yeah, I hope it's open, all open source. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, projects have you been uh, contributing to? So there's the Cat Containers project, sure. Coco, yeah. and Verizon all. Yeah, also the reason. Okay, nice. Yeah. And so the, and the second thing was, um, you said there's still kernel work uh, to upstream. Uh, have you, are you aware that there's a new kernel SIG that the CCC is running? Yeah, I see. So yes, Linux, excellent. yeah, yeah. So also kernel has a SIG for, especially for the remote attestation, right? Good, yeah. I just have one question real quick. Um, you mentioned a lightweight firmware. Yeah, you went into that EDK2 is a bit heavy. Uh, do you have any specific projects in mind? Uh, yes, it's called TD Shim. You can check. This is a TD Shim. Yeah, that's why it's Intel does for the TDX. Okay, is this at all related to the SVSM project? Because that's how we've been seeing lots of firmware for confidential computing. It should be in Coco, maybe. Yeah, in in the Coco umbrellas. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know if that's if that's what you were referring to, rather than the EDK two or something like that. But okay. Uh, thanks for the demo. So one quick question about mm -hmm. performance, because you mentioned at the beginning that there are a few workarounds, and okay. just looking at the demo, the value there is there for security, but um, how do you speed it up to make sure that you can you know launch those? secure containers faster? Oh, so uh, th that is an interesting question. So 
for performance here, we've not done because all our demos and work currently is based on software. The host is totally purely emulated. So, and uh, currently we actually don't get any hardware to support this. So that you can see the launching is very slow. Yeah. So, but uh, after the hardware we get, we will be working on the performance optimizations to, 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 yeah, to make sure that the, this is e equally acceptable. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, the, this might just be a more general confidential computing question, but when I look at the process of uh, verifying when you start mm -hmm. up that you're in the environment you expect and you get that attested, is there any way that can be lost during the lifetime of, say, the container in this case, or does it know, I suppose, because it has the trust rooted in that hardware that its environment is not going to be modified as time goes on? Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I don't so get it quite quick is, clearly. Is there a way that, that the uh, at boot, when you verify that you're in the secure environment, mm -hmm. is there a way that that could be tampered with or, or lost? Like later during the oh. lifetime of the container, it realizes that a change has been made. I don't know. You know, maybe there's yeah, some yeah. hardware so added or... That one maybe you mean uh, what we should do on the remote attestation. We have the measurement to, to, to trace all the booting process to make sure that the boot is secure. And the measurement we will send to the attestation service to, yeah, to, to be, yeah, compare with the reference values to make sure that, that the boot is secure. Oh. And I think the answer to that is you have to trust the firmware and the hardware to have done the right thing, which is why having open firmware uh, and open hardware is as, as good as you're going to get. Um, so it's basically part of a CCP. You have to have a part of a CCP, which is why it's an engine. It's part of the application story. Um, but there's only so much you can do. If someone's messing with your firmware while you're Yes, yes, point, good, point. good point. You, you understand, yeah, it's clear how it's put together, how it's going to work based exactly. on the lifetime. And that's why CCP is always adaptive. Uh, may I have a quick question? It seems like uh, it showed like uh, the boot time, but we didn't see like uh, how the even logs look like and uh, how the Cobra and the verification. Uh, logs oh. are. Yeah. I, I'm not sure the even log currently because we have not supported currently in the in, in Coco, but we plan to working on. Sorry. Okay. So for the yeah. like Cobo ones, like a uh, uh, stable. Stable uh, ones for the like a uh, yes. Ca yes. Canonical binary format. Oh no! This, this is, is a concise binary. It is a concise binary. Blah, for blah, blah. the event, like yeah, yeah, yeah. For Th that, that's defined in the ARM IMM spec. So for the remote attestation, uh, uh, pr precise and the data transaction. Okay, so so I was wondering, like in the event, like uh, something like event log, like yeah. uh, like a. Symbol. So they also has been already defined in oh, yeah. in the symbol. Yeah. So yeah. what uh, components do you consider are in the TCB, like? Uh, uh, like you mean com components? The components are in the TCB and what are not. So uh, in the TCB, uh, usually for the, you mean the firmware, the guest firmware, the yeah. kernel, uh -huh. right? A uh, whole cell guest, just the guest kernel. Yeah, we, we just trust the guest. And the hosted firmware. Because so, but the host, the host kernel, on, on top of the host kernel, we don't trust. Because so the, the room, uh, the cloud service providers will not be trusted. But, but we trust the firmware and the CPU. Okay, so the gas kernel is trusted. However, the gas kernel is booted by the container D, container Shim, and then Kata, Shim and Kata. And uh, all by the container D and container Shim, oh. and con those ones are not in the TCB, while the VM is in the TCB. Currently, so container D is just a, a user space component. It is, we can say that it's a middleware to call with a QMU command. So that one is running in, in the host. So this. Uh, but we're using that one to boot the guest kernel, right? 
Yes, but so how could it? Yeah, it's not in the TCB. Yeah, as long yeah. as it's just booting it, it's not actually uh, part of the runtime. Yeah. Um, and it's not actually being uh, injected into the TE. Yes. Um, it helps, but yeah. If you think about different virtual machines, um, as long as it's not if it's part of the TCB, and say you have a malicious hypervisor that's looking to get involved and it launches it correctly, the the worst attack you can have there is a denial of service because it's actually controlling what's running, but it doesn't control what was what uh, was. In yes. that actual virtual machine, yeah. yes. Um, or what? So the in that SGX, I think, because I think TDX kind of rolled back that that uh, trust in the hypervisor. TDX the, with the new generation of TDX, uh, that you they do not trust the hypervisor. Uh, it's not part of the trusted computing base. It used to be because the hypervisor used to handle your attestation uh, at that point. Um, It, 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 it interacts with your secure processor, though, and that's in your TCB. So it's like a, tr it's not your, it's not KVM that's encrypting those pages. It's KVM telling the secure processor to encrypt those pages. So when you're, you like when they say you have to trust your firmware, you have to trust your secure processor. That's the kind of the boundary between you being confidential and you not, because at that point KVM's only interacting with the secure processor to encrypt those pages. But the actual handling of that encryption and what's included in your workload is done by the secure processor. Yeah, but that KVM is also for TDB. That's right. Where here, where the technology managed the runtime. So, oh, go ahead. I don't think I can answer that as much. Uh, I could speak more on the virtualization than the container part. I think that this should be maybe re regarded with uh, uh, software supply chain side, right? Because those one, even ContainerD has been hampered, the VM, I mean the room, still cannot be injected or de decrypted from the host. Because uh, from the host side, it's, it still cannot see any v memories of the guest. Can, can we go back to one of your earlier slides? Yeah, sure. Let me see. Okay. Let's come to maybe. Let me hear. Oh, sorry. Oh. This one? Oh, yeah, so this one. So, oh, no, there's another one. So this, this one. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, your question is about which component here? I mean, the TCB. So, well, the other TCB. 
Well, oh, the, TC the TCB is everything in green. Yeah. And, and also the root state, ER3. The monitor and the hardware, right? Yes, yes. Those are the only things which are in the TCB. Right? Of course. Right. And they're all measured. Yes. Yeah. So we can see here, so the hypervisor and also the cutter shame and even container D, they are in the normal world on top of the on top of the hypervisor. So they are not trusted. But even they are not trusted, they can just launch from the from the user side in the normal world. And so the only interaction they have is via RMI. Yes. Yeah, and RMN is in the trusted uh, TCB and that is being careful about what it does with the RMI inspection. Oh, okay. Yeah, is that right? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. Okay. Very good discussion. Yeah. Thank you.